Hanover Area School District Board of Education. Education regular meeting Monday, May 8, 2023. Will now come to order. Pledge allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible. Roll call. Ms. Blage? Here. Mr. Holmgren? Here. Dr. Kopko? Here. Mr. Maley? Here. Mr. Mosher? Here. Mr. Warwick? Here. Ms. Potsko? Here. Mr. Reddick? Here. Mr. Stevens? Here. Form established. Executive session report. Pursuant to the Pennsylvania Sunshine Act, the board president wishes to announce that at its regular meeting convened for general purposes on May 6, 2023, May 8, 2023, the Board of Education of Hanover Area School District held an executive session to discuss matters of employee relations, labor negotiation, trend or actual litigations, and went into a closed or executive session at 6 p.m and began the public meeting at 7.06 p.m. The subjects discussed in the executive session related solely to matters of employee relations, labor negotiating, threat or actual litigation. Okay, this evening, ladies and gentlemen, we have a special presentation from our Director of Pupil Services, Mrs. Amory Mantillon, and our Chief, Christopher Wolfolk going to present our latest update for our career pathways for next year's curriculum. And do um, you want to begin? Is that turn yeah, yeah, but you're going to go for it. Emory, you want me to move? I, I don't know if the light student response team and EMS program for the 2023-24 school year. In Hanover area, we have a focus on career pathways with the state of Pennsylvania. College and career readiness have become central to the agenda of state-led initiatives, particularly since federal reform stipulated greater school, district, and state accountability for students' educational opportunities and academic performance in the Elementary and Secondary Education Act. This includes Pennsylvania 339 Career Exposure and Exploration and PA Career Pathways for Graduation. As we look at the challenges of education in the 21st century, we realize that community engagement and creative partnerships will be required for us to lift our communities and empower our students to reach their full potential. Our community partnership is with the Hanover Area School District and Hanover Township EMS Services. I'm proud to present this program, which was created with Chris Wolfo, to strengthen our community ties, to strengthen our partnership, and to elevate our students to the very top with their choice of career pathways. We have been a leader for the last few years in our area with career pathways we have different agencies and different entities coming to us, asking us what our pathway to success with all of our career initiatives are. So now we have another new program that is not only new to our district, but it's new to the state of Pennsylvania that we have created. Why is this important? It's our economic future. In a highly competitive global economy, America's economic future the prosperity of its citizens and the success of United States employers increasingly depend on the education and skills of the workforce. Pennsylvania's economic future depends on having a well-educated and skilled workforce that is prepared to meet the current and projected demands of a global, knowledge-based 21st century economy. Our career pathway and career readiness 
systems offer an effective approach to the development of a skilled workforce by increasing the number of workers in the U.S. who gain industry recognized and academic credentials necessary to work in jobs that are in high demand. And this is where our focus has been for the last few years, and this is where our focus continues by building and creating new programs. It is imperative that Pennsylvania students at all educational levels have access to high quality academic and technical education, as well as opportunities to assess interests, build skills, and identify and explore career aligned with those interests and skills. So not only are we creating programs, we're aligning the career pathways with what is required by the state, and we are also taking into consideration what the workforce needs and also what our students' interests and skills are. And at this point, I'm gonna hand this over to Chief Wolfo so he could get into the part of why we started this program and the urgency of this for the community. Good evening, everybody. Um, so my name is Chris Wolfo, I'm the EMS Chief here in Hanover, but I also serve as the Regional EMS Chief. So I have uh, obligations and coordinator um, responsibilities for Back Mountain Regional, which covers the Back Mountain and also Mountaintop EMS. Um, several years ago, we recognized that there's an issue in the nation, and we're down about 40% nationwide of EMS pr uh, practitioners, whether it be EMTs or paramedics. So we started the Thomas Gusher Training Institute. And those of you who don't know Thomas Gusher, he was a 1994 graduate of Hanover Area High School. He was a uh, EMT paramedic and firefighter who died of non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. Um, took his paramedic test um, in Wilkes-Barre General Hospital after a stroke, blind in one eye, and scored uh, top in his class. Was able to make some recovery and actually worked for the Ambulance Association for many years. And even on his last dying day that night, he was teaching the EMTs and paramedics how to do stuff at his house that night. So we created a, a training institute named after him. Uh, we have started an EMT program right here in Hanover Township where they would normally have to go to LCC or another college-based program. We just uh, completed our um, fifth class, over 70 students. We have, um, the numbers are a little skewed because this last class have, haven't taken their numbers yet, but we have 100% pass rate in our practical sessions and we're over 80% in our um, written exam that they have done. So we're really proud of that. We have um, kept those EMTs, uh, several of them, whether it be in Mountaintop, Back Mountain, Hanover Township, Wolfbury City, are working as EMTs, firefighters, paramedics currently. So we're bringing that, we're bringing our um, local guys, training them the way we need, the right way, and we're keeping, keeping them in our communities. So, we are made up of um, several instructors. Four of us are national um, certified in uh, EMS education, uh, both level one and level two. We have another instructor that is about to uh, finalize his level two, which will be five level two instructors by the 2023-2024 school year. Um, we also have adjunct prof professors that come in and teach our programs. Some of those include the trauma director at Geisner Long Valley, uh, OB, nurses, um, cardiac physicians. So we get the, the top of every profession in to teach with us to make sure our staff and our students are well educated and top of the line in case of an emergency. Our medical director, we're governed, we're uh, overseen by him. He's a uh, US Army physician, also serves as an uh, emergency room doc at Geisner, uh, Geisner Health System and um, he's very hands-on and teaches a lot of classes uh, himself. So over the last couple of months, uh, this school year actually, we've done a lot of training within the school. I think 269 faculty, teachers, administration certified in CPR, first aid, stop the bleed, Narcan administration. So I compliment the board and the administration and all the teachers who took that training because there's not another district in the area that's doing that. And that's huge for us because if something ever happened to a student or a teacher, it doesn't need to be an active shooter. It doesn't need to be 
uh, a broken ankle on a basketball court. It could be anything. You know, somebody dies, it dropped over of a heart attack or a stroke today. Now our staff here knows what to do in the event of an emergency. So working with Anne Marie, we came up with, with this concept of the Hanoverary Response Team and Hanoverary EMS Program. So our thought process is, what we want to institute is we would start the EMS Response Team. So in ninth and 10th grade, those students that are interested, we would start them off with CPR and first aid training. And in the event of an emergency in the school, those guys, those students would be able to respond and help us in the event of an emergency. That doesn't necessarily mean it needs to be during the day, during class, with sporting events, football games, after school uh, activities, all of that comes together where um, muscle, heart muscle is, is wasted in, in seconds waiting for us to get here, even though we're close. So we would mentor them, we would get them certified in CPR and first aid. We'd also teach them how to use the fire extinguisher accordingly with, with the fire department. And this stuff, these, these programs would be done during the wind period, right? And then after school on the weekend with their, with their commitment. After they go into there, we would follow into the career pathways that Anne Marie spoke about. So as long as the student would turn 16 um, by April, they would be able to enroll into an EMT program that we would have in the school here during their win period every day. And by the time they graduate, they will be an EMT. So one year they'll become an EMT. From there, they could walk right into a full-time job within our system. So as I said, 11th and 12th grade was where we would be targeting for the EMT program. They would need to be 16 years of age um, in April because that's when they would have to take their state uh, testing to become an EMT. And at 18 years old, they would be able to work for, uh, for the ambulance. I started myself when I was 15, I became an EMT. Well, I started the EMT program when I was 15. I became an EMT when I was 16 because I took my test just after first year. My birthday is in January. And at 18, I started at the ambulance and I've been there ever since. And uh, I've worked my way up to the chief now, as I said, the regional chief, and it's a very rewarding career. So during their, practice, during their um, time with us uh, in the EMT program, they would shadow at the 911 center so they would get to see what would be going on at the 911 center when somebody calls 911. They would shadow in the emergency room. They would shadow on the ambulance. They would also do clinical time on that ambulance. And then in addition to that, they would do practical hours on the weekends and the evenings as scheduled to learn how to do the skills. So most of it would be done during that wind period during the school district, or during the school day, and then a little bit on after school on Saturdays that we would coordinate. Right now, we're the only ones in the area that are doing this. Hospital has something very similar but not quite as in depth as, as what we're planning. So at the end, they would take the EMT certification, they would be nationally certified, and they would uh, qualify for EMT employment upon graduation, or even before graduation, depending on their, their uh, age. So with that though, nationally certified, if they were going to school in Miami, say, they would be able to work down there as an EMT or in the ER as an EMT. So they're not working at just any job. They're serving the community in multiple different capacities. So with the career pathways, um, this starts as an, an EMT, but it could take our students in any direction, even as a foundation, if they want to go into the medical field, if they want to be a police officer, if they want to go into any form of law enforcement, um, this could open doors and give them a foundation for whichever career pathway uh, they choose. So we're proud to give them something to go right out into the workforce if that is their choice or if they want to use this as a foundation in the medical field or law enforcement or in you know, any field, even it could be um, social services, um, they have something that they can work with while they continue their education. And also, um, I just wanted to list all of the individuals who will be working um, with us hand in hand. 
uh, during this whole program. Um, I'd like to thank Mr. Barrett uh, for his continued commitment and collaboration with all the career pathways in this project. Um, I also, um, Mr. Sipper, our high school principal, he'll be working hand in hand with us as we start the vetting process, get everything going and day-to-day -day operations. Um, also, um, you know, Chris and I will be working together with everyone. Uh, Fire Chief Temrent, uh, Police Chief Dave Lewis, uh, Police Assistant Chief Eric Richardson, and our SRO Sergeant Ryan Swinski. So this is a team effort. And there's even other individuals that um, in a broader range help out. And this is what's so um, important with partnerships because we can't do this by ourselves. We go in there as a group, we stick together, and we do this as a team. And that's how we get our students to succeed. So all of the pro uh, programs we've already created for Career Pathways, we've all been a part of. We've all seen um, immediate success and all of our programs are now continuing and each year they're getting stronger and more students are engaging in the programs. Uh, the CTC started uh, doubling, almost tripling. This year we maintain the numbers and there's an increased interest. Uh, we have two students who are in another program where um, they'll graduate from high school and they'll also graduate with their associates in electrical um, construction and this is a new pro program that was just implemented. So everything we've done so far has been successful and it's only gaining ground and, and you know moving forward. So we're excited about this program and I want to thank the board for all your continued support as we um, continue with our career um, partnerships and as we can you know continue with um, all the mandates with the state because the state of Pennsylvania has different um, requirements with career pathways and I'm proud to say that this is the first year for our seniors where they have to have the pathways passed in order to graduate and we um, have a graduating class that is now done so I'm very proud of all the people the teachers our guidance counselors are outstanding and all the individuals that work with the students on a daily basis that get these students where they are so thank you very much for all of your support. We couldn't do it without you. Thank you. Thank you. acceptance of minutes and reports. Regular meeting minutes of April 4, 2023. Lucerne Intermediate Unit Board of Directors regular meeting minutes of March 22nd, 2023. And the Wilkes-Barre Area Career and Technical Center Board of Education Joint Operating Committee meeting minutes of April 17th, 2023. Can I have a motion? Motion. Motion by Mrs. Blight. Second. Second by Rick Stevens. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Superintendent's report. Yes, Mr. Chairman. I'd like to recognize <clears throat> that this week, <coughs> that this week is Teacher National Teacher Appreciation Week. Uh, we are celebrating our teachers every single day. We have been doing it on social media, as well as sending gifts to our school and encouraging our communities to show the appreciation uh, for their teachers uh, throughout the course of this week as we try to celebrate them every day but this is the week that we primarily focus on them in addition to that I'd like to point out two students of the month very first student of the month here at the high school is McKenna Nay McKenna Nay is racked, ranked in the top 20 of her class she's a four-year member of the National Honor Society actually the secretary of the National Honor Society she is a senior captain of the soccer team track and cross country for the past six years uh, actually a uh, wrestling state qualifier for the past two years uh, volunteer at the SPCA high honors since seventh grade hobbies are reading music and walks and intends to study biology when she attends college in the fall congratulations to McKenna and her family <laughs> our Wilkes-Barre area CTC student of the month is Emily Schultz Emily is uh, studying graphic arts and design for the past three years at the CTC. 
She wants to create her own game. Uh, when she graduates, uh, she's uh, interested in being an artist and writing, and she is very happy about the legacy that her and her family are continual graduates of CTC, and I congratulate her and her family to continue on that legacy. Congratulations to Emily and her family. Congratulations. And that is the conclusion of my report, Mr. Chair. Motion to accept the superintendent's report. Motion, Motion to Orvick. Motion by Mr. Orvick. Second. Second by Mike Marger. All in favor? All right. At this time, anyone from the public like to address the board on agenda items only? Yes, ma'am. Yes, it would be posted. Okay, and then, so the other question I have is appointing Joe Parsnick as a reserve safety officer at a rate of $35 an hour, effective March 8th of 2023, pending all clearances. Has he worked in this position already? No, no, we did not receive those clearances yet, but we were, we were set to hire him. I believe his clearances finally came in this week. They finally came in this week. Okay, but it's effective March 8th. Why would it go back to 8th, March 8th? Why doesn't it get effective as of the date that you got the clearances and he was cleared? Is there a reason for that? Is there going to be some type of payment made to him? Mm -hmm. No. Nothing? No. Okay, well that, as far as, can I <coughs> that, this is all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay, general recommendations to approve items one through four. Do I have a motion? Motion. Second. Motion by Paul Holgum. Second by Mike Marser. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Financial recommendations to approve items one. Through 11. Number 11 will read motion to approve entering an agreement with the Hanover Area School District and the Miller Company, who was awarded the bid for sanding, refinishing the floor repair of the junior senior high high school gymnasium. Can I have a motion? Motion. Motion Second. by Mrs. Lights. Second, Second Orvick. Second by Rick Orvick. Roll call. Ms. Blage? Yes. Mr. Holmgren? Yes. Dr. Kopko? No on two. Abstain on five. I want to point out on number eight that there is no tax increase. So I vote yes on everything else other than my abstention on five and my no on two. Mr. Maley? Yes. Mr. Mosher? No on one and yes on the rest. Mr. Warwick? Yes. Ms. Potsko? Yes. Mr. Reddick? Yes. Mr. Stevens? Yes. Personnel <coughs> recommendations to approve items 1 to 15 and number 8 to read. Approve the following extra curriculum 
personnel for the 2023-24 school year, William Callahan, varsity boys basketball head coach at $6,778. Can I have a motion? Motion. Motion by Mrs. Blight. Horvick second. Second by Mr. Horvick, roll call. Ms. Blight? Yes. Mr. Holmgren? Yes. Dr. Kopko? Yes. Mr. Maley? Yes. Mr. Mazur? Yes. Mr. Warwick? Yes. Ms. Potsko? Yes. Mr. Reddick? No on six and seven, yes on the rest. Mr. Stevens, yes. No business? Mr. Chairman, can I step in here? Sure. I would just like to uh, make one public announcement and I would really like to thank Mrs. Mantione and Chief Opal today, the time and effort that it took to create this career pathway and the tedious compliance with the Department of Education standards and adhering to the regulations that Mr. Warfel uh, took a tremendous amount of work. So I wanna congratulate you, Mrs. Mantione, for your hard work and offering to these students that are going to be leaving this building, not only with the Hanover Area School District Diploma, but the national certification go anywhere in this country. So that is all based on the efforts of both of these people down in the front. I congratulate them and I thank you again. Well done. Well, well done. That's all I have, Mr. Chairman. Old business? Public comment? social media um, to kind of get, get them to pay for this crisis, this social media crisis, and to, to recover costs to help our children that have these mental challenges now, mental health challenges. And I, I'd just like to know what the state of Pennsylvania and if they're going to take any responsibility for this because every day more and more studies are coming out that that masks did not have the effectiveness that they that they purported uh, vaccinations are, are not as effective as they once claimed um, the lockdowns probably did not have the effect that that um, our public health officials um, all the way up to the federal government um, had claimed we're going to to save lives and, and really it, all of that impacted our children and we went along with it and and a lot of a lot of those those problems that they're having are, are a result of going along with this stuff now this was this was brand new and and I get everybody was um, going off the best knowledge that they had but I hope this is this this social media crisis I, I had not actually heard of, and, and we're pushing all these new um, education platforms onto MacBooks or, or you know, technology. It's, it's kind of geared towards being on social media, um, and I, I don't understand, you know, we're gonna go after social media. I, I just like to say that this, this should open people's eyes to really understanding and not just going along with everything that, that the state comes down with in the future because they, they did not do the job they needed to do for our children. And, and I believe the, the school board could have opposed them. Um, again, it's, it was a tough situation. I can't say um, I, can, I can completely blame the school district, everybody kind of went along with it. Um, but in the future, I, would, I think this should, I think we should admit that everything that happened was not probably how we should have done it, and we should reflect on that. Um, and I agree that social media is, is a big problem, um, 
plaguing our children and how they develop. Uh, but so were those lockdowns and, and the mask mandates and all that, that other stuff. So um, let's let's throw that in the lessons learned moving forward. I, I that is my message. Thank you. Thank you.
nothing happened to him. I was told to get over it, clean my jacket and get over it and quit being so emotional because I was a girl. So I want to commend the, the school board and the school for how we are working together to try to protect all children of the community because this is a wonderful community. My mother, Constance Hartman, fought very vermin and bad, how do I want to say that word? It's COVID brain. Very hard for this community to get more police officers. She died in 2021. I'm hoping to continue her legacy and fight for what's right and what's right for our community. So thank you for all that you do on the board and thank all the teachers for what you do for the kids. It is appreciated. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Future meetings, June Wharf session, Tuesday, June 6, 2023. And the regular meeting is Tuesday, June 6, 2023. I make a motion to adjourn. Motion. motion. Motion by Mr. Holmgren. Mr. Holmgren. Kafka second. Second by Dr. Kafka. All in favor? Aye. Aye.